we'll just checking the time. We do have a workshop at 3.30. The remaining items on the agenda are reasonably straightforward. So I, I know Councillor Darby and Councillor Hills, while you're still here, the proposed land exchange in Northcote, I know we've got staff waiting for that. Paul's been waiting all day for that one. But I do think it's fairly straightforward. Um, so I'm actually just going to suggest you have a recommendation that you've added, which I think is really great. And I know this is supported by your local board. So, Paul, is there anything that you want to add? No? Okay. I don't think there are any questions. I don't see any questions. You're happy to move, Councillor Darby. You're happy to second Councillor Hills. I'll put that. All those in favour, please say aye. Against. Carried. Thank you. And thank you, Paul, for being here. So we'll move on. Hills and Darby. Hills and Darby. And we move on. So thank you, Paul. You're going to have a break after all the hard work on PIHA. You deserve it. And we'll move to our submission to MB on the process heat in New Zealand. We do have um, Anita and Perrin or John. We're on um, yep, we're on 13. So just to make sure everyone's on the same page, we're on item 13. Thanks, John and Perrin and Anita. <laughs> well, just finally, we're here, and we will be having some time with you shortly. So a brief presentation just to let everyone know what it's about. Kia ora koutou. Um, we could probably keep this quite brief, but I just thought I'd do a quick frame here about why this, um, why is it retrospective and why we're a bit ahead. Um, and then we'll go into a couple slides and then the, um, the submission that we've already lodged. Um, so why this, I think in the development of our regional climate action plan, which we've been working through with you over the last year, it's become quite clear that we're starting to get into a groove with what our asks and what our relationship with central government is around climate change. And this is another one of those things Process heat is actually a big part, <coughs> excuse me, a big part of our emissions profile in Auckland. Um, and so that's why this is of interest to us um, and part of that larger uh, conversation. Why is it retrospective? Well, as you can imagine, when the central government asks for uh, submissions, um, the committee timeline doesn't always allow us to consult, get across it and respond. So we've lodged an officer submission and we're coming back here right now to get it endorsed and we will go back to MB um, with what the decisions are. And then why we're ahead, ahead just a, a brief bit about that. Um, as part of the Low Carbon Auckland review we started in February um, with your agreement for that, um, we initially identified this as an area that needed some additional information. So we thought, great, we'll commission some work in this space. We worked with Waikato University to do so. So we actually have a much better understanding right now of the, uh, the needs and the current situation with process heat in Auckland, which we will be feeding into our climate action plan that we'll be discussing with you as part of the workshop. So just a little context setting there. We're, we're a bit late, but that's kind of part of the process. But we're also a bit ahead here because ECA and others are now trying to come up to speed to match where we are in this space at a national level. So it puts us on par. I'll pass it over quickly to talk about what process heat actually is. Um, I think Anita has a slide on that, and then we'll wrap it up. Good afternoon. I would first like to clarify what process heat is. Um, process heat is the thermal energy used in business in the form of steam, hot water, or direct heat. And examples of the areas that it is used is evaporation, drying, product heat, and chemical reactions. A specific example is the use of process heat in food processing, um, where it's used to sterilize liquid-based products to, till, to kill any contaminants and ensure that we have high quality and safe food. Auckland Council is also a small user of process heat in the operation of its buildings and facilities. Um, looking at process heat in the Auckland and New Zealand context, it's a significant contributor to our carbon emissions, with the energy sector contributing to 28% of our emissions and process heat um, 20% of those emissions. Um, in New Zealand, energy sector contributes to 40% of our overall emissions, with 27% specifically related to process heat. 
Most of Auckland's processes are supplied through natural gas, and our main emitter is the primary metal product manufacturing sectors, whereas nationally it's the wood, pulp and paper manufacturing areas. Um, Kia ora, everyone. So on the next slide, um, I think I'm just going back to what John said, and the work we've done on local, um, on climate, uh, Auckland Climate Action Plan, we've identified um, the different emissions areas for Auckland. Actually, this goes back to low carbon Auckland. So we looked at um, the different areas of emissions in Auckland. I think we've shared that profile, emissions profile with you uh, a few times now. So the key emission contributors are transport, energy sector, and um, our pro uh, industrial processes. And on the energy side, 27, 20, uh, 80 to 30 percent of the energy sector has got um, emissions, and a 20 percent of that, depending on how we've actually cut that, um, around 15 percent of it sits with heavy industries, and 5 percent sits with commercial buildings. Hence, we are actually contributor as well as Auckland Council. Um, as I said, 20% is important for us to look at it. John said we looked at it, analyzed it. Now we understand what we need to do. We are ahead of the curve. And it gives us an opportunity to work with government. So I've been working with, I've been talking to ECA since last year. So they started doing this work. Uh, we actually they commissioned the same person at Waikato University to do the work for all of New Zealand. And they kind of got very similar report out as well. So we understand what they've done in the report. And um, so it gives us a good opportunity to actually work hand in hand with government and coordinate our approach to the industries in Auckland and also the approach we should take. Um, the submission points we raised, it came from the research that it was done by Waikato, obviously with our review as well. And in the context of Auckland, uh, we emphasize that energy efficient only provides one to 5% reduction in energy use emissions. So the point is, it's not enough. Energy efficiency is not enough. Uh, low to medium temperatures, so process heat, the temperature varies between zero to 400 degrees. So the low to medium temperature, 20 to 200, 200 degrees, could transition to renewable re uh, sources. Um, it's probably not that straightforward. We need to look at capability and the skills, who can actually help industries to find, identify where they can transition, and also what available technologies there are, and also government support and um, for them to understand what they need to do. The high temperature range is another uh, kettle of fish, 200 to 400 degrees. Currently, is not technically feasible to do that. So it makes it quite complicated. And with New Zealand's supply of natural gas um, that is going to go, is predicted to be going down steeply after 2022, uh, we also suggest that in, in our recommendations that it needs to be gas should be prioritized for industries that require high temperature process heat. So that means the low to medium temperatures, we need to support that transition sooner than later. So and as John mentioned at um, the beginning of the talk, uh, we would like to endorsement of the submission we made to ECA, um, I think a couple of weeks ago now. And that's it. Thank you. I've got a few questions or, or um, comments to make. First off, just around the mention of hydrogen as a fuel. Um, I mean, we know that hydrogen is actually not a fuel in, in the sense that you've got to use electricity to make it. So I just put a question mark over the substantive nature of what we're saying there. Uh, so, so that's one issue. The other issue that I just want to raise is the process heat that exists within our, um, our sewage and water, which is massive. It may be low temperature. Uh, other cities are tapping into that. Um, quite obviously, we're not. It's not figuring here. So I just put it to you as a consideration. Obviously, it's water care. And then just in respect of woody biomass, we're not, well, we may not be considering it at this point, but there's the opportunity to um, convert um, food waste and, and, and so on, which is biomass, into a significant amount of energy, which other cities do. And the huge amount of uh, material from the um, commercial sector that finds its way into uh, landfills in the form of wood 
and combustibles and tyres and so on. So I just toss of toss those things in. I mean, they can also be converted into methane and so on. So I just toss those things in that aren't covered in the submission. Remembering this is retrospective. I know so it's retrospective. Yeah, if we've got a chance for follow-up or presentations, we'll pick up those points, Councillor. Um, Magoff. <coughs> thanks, Madam Chair, and uh, thanks, team. Thank you for your retrospective submission. It puts you in a, a rock and hard place, and I completely understand that. I think you've done really well. Um, one question I have is the 22 billion average from the industrial sector that's using the heat. Is there a disproportionate percentage using the high heat to achieve a higher value in the end product, or is that just a still, you know, it's, it's, it's still the you know, 7.3 billion worth using the high heat? Is that the result of? Bit of a difficult question, I'm sorry. Um, you're referring to the $22 billion annually. Yeah. Uh, that's just coming from just all of industry together. We don't know how it breaks yeah. down. No, we haven't. Okay. So my other point then is to, to recreate that higher heat, we have to either burn gas or coal, and we're already importing 300 tonnes of coal a month or a week or something into Auckland at the moment to substitute the Huntley stuff. Um, and you mentioned the gas. We start to develop a hole come 22 and running out 26, <coughs> um, and with no more exploratory of coal. So then we've got a double whammy. We have to import gas from potentially Western Australia, which will have a bigger footprint, carbon yes. footprint again. So you'll be factoring that in, I would presume, into your equations going forward. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, a process question leading to an observation about the submissions. I appreciate the need for a submission, but I'm not very, I don't like retrospective submissions. Um, the the submission was due, um, when was the submission due? The submission, the deadline was the 22nd of February. By my count, so we had a committee meeting on the 12th of February. Why wasn't it done then? Or at least uh, a pro forma foreshadowed there with an opportunity for input prior to the 22nd of February deadline? That's the first question, please. To the chair, no, I appreciate the uh, concern, councillor. Um, look, I think, I think here this, um, we don't like retrospective submissions either. Um, I think the point is that we've done some work here and this is a bit unusual in that it's not a policy position that they're seeking. They're seeking to gather information um, and evidence around New Zealand. That's kind of the process that MB and ECA are going through right now. We happen to have done some of this work. And so while we could have dropped everything, including preparing for the symposium that's next week and developing our climate plan, which we promised to you certain touch points over, over the next several months, um, we, um, we didn't think that it was a very controversial topic. Uh, honestly, I think it's, it's, this is the information that you're asking for. This is what we've I've done some research on. So we're basically through a submission process handing that over to, to MB and ECA. I don't agree with you. Um, at para four, you talk about, um, uh, you talk about the need um, with respect to the price of carbon through a revised ETS. I support a market-based ETS. Uh, but then you make the comment um, on the last line, including a targeted approach for users of low-grade process heat. What would a targeted approach be? Explain to me what you think that targeted approach would look like and how would it affect those particular users? Um, so the targeted approach we're referring to, we've identified technologies that can apply to the low-grade heat and that targeted approach would go to those sectors. We can introduce capability. We know who's actually, basically, there are a couple of basically ex experts in New Zealand that could do this work and they can actually help these industries to use these technologies. So it came from the report saying this targeted approach could help the low um, great process heat to transition, but it would need considered effort from government to do that. But we're going to be the convener facilitator of our finding. 
Could I just also add to, so I think just the bigger picture here is that there's not a lot of new here. Um, we've gone through this committee to actually establish what the policy positions to the Productivity Commission, what the, what the policy positions around the ETS, what the policy position around the Zero Carbon Bill is through this committee with an official ahead of retrospective um, decision by committee. So um, we're building off that. And that's why I started this conversation saying, or this um, briefing with, um, this fits into a bit of a groove we've got with, you know, we've developed a lot of work in this space. We're developing our own plan. We've already established policy posi positions for a lot of this. So we, whenever ECA or MB come back to us requesting input, we can kind of draw from what we've already decided. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, I'm happy to move the recommendation. If there's a seconder for this, Councillor Walker, you want to speak to it, Councillor Newman? Yeah, Chair. It's because this is a retrospective submission, and I actually think that the process here is wrong. And I'm not going to support this, I'm not going to endorse this because of the reasons. Uh, that I have uh, hinted in my questions. Um, I can appreciate that the officers have other things and, and you want to prioritise your work. But I think that given that there was a deadline being the 22nd of February for the lodgement of submission at an MB, at, at MB, and that there was a committee meeting of the whole on the 12th of February, um, that there should really have been... Um, an address of this matter on that meeting agenda. And even if the final submission wasn't prepared by that date, it should have been flagged at that time. So, Chair, um, I won't be voting for this, and if that could be recorded, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. We'll note your concerns. I'll put the recommendation. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Aye. Councillor Newman. Councillor oh, Fletcher Newman. And member. Yeah, okay. I just I and we'll record that. That's fine. I I do, however, just need to remind elected members that the government often drops these things on us. With we're always accused of never giving the community long enough to respond. We usually try and give a couple of months. The government often gives us a matter of weeks and in the Christmas holidays to drop a paper on our staff and expect an instantaneous response I think is inhuman. So I think our staff have actually done very well to get this to us, particularly in the, in the form that they have. And I'm very satisfied that what was done was needed because it didn't contain anything that was not already existing policy. I completely concur that retrospective sign-off is not a good thing. However, it would be really good if government departments took a humane approach and a genuine approach to consultation. My sense is they do an appalling job and they really don't care about the practicalities because sometimes they're not particularly that interested, unlike councils which turn them themselves inside out to try and do that well. So we note, councillors and, and Member Blair, your point. However, I will defend our staff on this issue, absolutely. So that's been passed. The nays have been... And we move to item 14, which is the memos. Councillor Philip Bayner will move and someone else might second. Councillor Simpson will second. Um, I'll put that. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against... Carried, and we're done. So we will take a very brief break. It's, sorry, eight minutes. I was, was aiming to finish at three. It's eight minutes past three, so eight minutes late. We'll take a very quick break, and then we do have our workshop on climate change. So given some